Hey, welcome to this radio video and in our series on terminology on abbreviations and radio mumbo jumbo <laughs> um, we're continuing today with single sideband or SSB CW and I'll put both in the same um, in the same video because they're kind of linked on a lot of receivers uh, because a lot of receivers don't have a separate CW key to uh, tune a signal in CW. Uh, you'll simply use SSB mode for that listening. So what's SSB and what's CW? First of all, SSB means single sideband. CW means continuous wave. Um, the simplest form of this signal is the CW, which is what we usually call, and you can, you know, pretty much put the continuous wave and Morse code together because CW on a radio is there for you to listen to Morse code um, most of the time. But you know what? It can be used to listen to some types of signals that would not be Morse code but that would actually still transmit a continuous uh, frequency without any other information like uh, tone for example if you're just sending up a little tone that you want um, that could be used in, sing in CW mode but you know what for the easy understanding here CW and Morse code goes together so just you know Think of CW as, oh, this is a, you know, a button to receive Morse code. And that's it. Now, why don't radios have a CW button if it's to listen to Morse code? It's because single sideband mode in a receiver actually works very well in receiving Morse code. And that's why single sideband is probably on most portable D mode that you can listen to Morse code or CW signals. Um, one little difference that there would be on a receiver, on the high end receiver between CW and SSB, is that um, a CW mode on a radio often comes with a much, much smaller um, bandwidth. So the selectivity or the, the filters in the radio. Uh, will actually enable in CW the radio to receive only a very narrow frequency range and that's to actually enable um, Morse code signals to actually be very close together and still be distinctly heard one by one. So a typical Morse code signal can be as small as you know uh, 500 hertz um, some IN receivers have 500 Hertz filters. That means that you can actually typically listen to a specific CW or Morse code signal in a very small range of the radio spectrum. And um, it also helps pack much, much more Morse code signals in the same frequency range. So that's why, you know, if you don't have an IN radio or if your filters are large, Maybe sometimes you'll tune in through an amateur radio band and think, what the hell, there's so many Morse code signals together. How can they understand each other? That's because your receiver is not specifically made for Morse code, so it has a very wide filter. So you hear typically maybe 20 different Morse code signals together. But the persons that are actually operating Morse code have receivers that have very tight filters. It means that they don't hear 20 signals. They hear only the one that they want to talk to. And they're not going to hear the neighboring Morse code signals. Single sideband is a transmission mode mostly for voice, uh, although, you know, an example, pirate stations will use single sideband for uh, music, but it's not the best. And, you know, if you've listened to music on single sideband, it's okay, it does the job, but it's not the best. Single sideband is typically 
uh, the equivalent of an AM signal in which you took off the central carrier. So if you watched my AM or amplitude modulation video, you notice that amplitude was on each side of a central carrier. In single sideband, no more central carrier. So when you're not transmitting voice or music, there's actually no signal. So that's why when you listen to an amateur radio operator in single sideband, well, every time that he stops speaking, there's just no more signal. The transmitter actually stopped transmitting because the only thing that it transmits is the amplitude of the voice or the music. Single sideband is divided into usually two modes. Now, portable receivers usually have only SSB written on the radio. So one of the questions I get asked all the time is, does SSB re radios receive upper sideband or lower sideband, which are usually um, abbreviated as LSB, USB? Yep, single sideband radio receives both. And what's the difference? Well, an upper sideband and a lower sideband. Once again, think about an AM signal with its central carrier. You saw the amplitude on an AM signal was both sides. On a single sideband signal, you'll have upper sideband, mean, meaning that from a central frequency, it goes upwards in frequency uh, for the modulation. And in a lower sideband signal, the amplitude goes downwards from the central frequency. Now, it doesn't change the frequency. It's still the same frequency. Like in AM mode, amplitudes change, the frequency remains the same. In sideband, the amplitude changes, still the same frequency. It's just that the amplitude will be upwards or downwards from a central frequency. Now, the great thing about a single sideband mount is that technically a good receiver, for example, on this ICOM receiver, you'd be able to send two different programs on the same frequency, but one using the upper sideband mode, the other one using the lower sideband mode. And all you'd have to do to change the program is change from upper to lower sideband. And I've actually um, heard signals at some point that had um, lower and upper sideband information that was different. Uh, a great example is I, I think one of my videos that I've uh, posted last year, you could hear a pirate station in upper sideband on um, the six megahertz band. And when I switched to lower sideband, I could hear, um, you know, like people talking in Spanish like probably fishermen or something. And, um, you know, they were in lower sideband. So when I was in upper sideband, I couldn't hear them and they weren't interfering. I'd be listening to the pirate station and I'd go in lower sideband and I wouldn't hear the pirates anymore. I would only hear the fishermen in Spanish. So um, that's also something nice about single sideband. The fact that it doesn't have a carrier also makes single sideband signals um, technically much cheaper. It uses a lot less energy. There's no carrier to transmit with the amplitude. But you know why? That's because your radio is the one making its own carrier. So sideband sends the amplitudes. Your receiver, when you're in single sideband mode, creates its own carrier that you match with the signal. And that's why a portable receiver will have a fine tuning for single sideband because you've got to match the frequency of the uh, carrier and the receiver with the frequency you're listening to. And that's why it's touchy on a portable receiver to listen to sideband because it's sometimes difficult to, you know, kind of match these things together. But on a higher end radio, like the ICOM here, um, instead of having a fine tuning, the receiver is so precise that all you have to do 
is first of all know if the signal is an upper or lower sideband and second the exact frequency where it's transmitting and that's all there's no adjustment there's no fine-tuning if it's not exactly in the frequency all you have to do is slightly change the frequency to match the frequency of the uh, transmission so it costs a lot less to transmit a sideband signal another thing about sideband signals is it takes less space in the spectrum so for example in an amateur radio band single sideband mode is popular for a very simple reason you get much more many more single sideband signals in say the 20 meter amateur radio band than you would be able to put AM signals so in a contest you can see how efficient actually single sideband is because there's just so many signals in this amateur bands and you know very little interference not that there's none but there's you know lower interference so all these things make single sideband popular and uh, you know less energy less space taken on the bands um, and in propagation conditions or you know higher interference there's probably a better chance of um, if you compare this to FM or AM mode you'll probably hear a single sideband signal and you'll be able to understand it where an AM and FM signal will be completely washed out you won't be able to even know what they're saying so single sideband is actually a good mode if you have eye interference and you know what CW Morse code is even better because you can actually tweak your receiver to receive the frequency range that's best for your ears and even a very very weak um, Morse code signal in high noise environment will sometime come true and you you'll be able to understand what is being sent out so that's uh, single sideband CW hope you enjoyed this little video explaining this um, I already had a video explaining single sideband and a lot of people enjoyed it but this one is more a little more in the, um, different terms and technical and goes through my series here that I'm actually making so we went through the different modes uh, of most receivers and uh, the next videos will be on the other type of terminology and you know abbreviations you might see on the radio or hear about uh, because some of the things we're going to talk about are also about things that aren't on the radio itself but are part of radios and radio listening. So hope you enjoy the series and take care. <laughs>